Good evening and welcome to the iBug Buzz conference call for Monday, November 1st, 2021. Uh, this is uh, an open forum for the, uh, well, first of all, I'm Maria and I'm one of your facilitators this evening along with Sandhya. Uh, this is a, an open forum for the discussion of uh, of questions or issues with iPhones, iPods, iPads, uh, Apple Watches or Apple TVs, the uh, use specifically of uh, voiceover with these devices. We uh, certainly discuss also the use of various accessories with these devices and the use of voiceover. So welcome to everyone who is joined in tonight and to those listening to the conference via their recorded podcast. So yes, this meeting is being recorded uh, for the purpose of uh, listening on various uh, platforms, which I will get to in a second. But because it is being recorded and because it's put out to various platforms and we want to keep the highest quality possible, we kindly have a couple of rules that we ask everyone to follow. Uh, we ask that uh, everyone stay muted when you're not speaking. We uh, also ask that when you do wish to ask or answer a question that you unmute and then you say your name and wait to be acknowledged by one of the facilitators. So again, that's myself or Sandhya this evening. So we do not declare any doubts. We do not use the raise hand feature of Zoom on this call. And uh, very important, kindly don't just speak out or make any kind of exclamations while others are speaking. Um, when you do want to announce yourself, uh, we ask that you wait until there's a bit of a break in the conversation. Um, when, if you're speaking when someone else is, it's very distracting and, and disruptive. And once you have uh, asked or answered a question, uh, we ask that you give other participants a chance to do the same before you make your second, uh, ask your second question or make your second comment to give everyone a chance to participate. And very important, uh, kindly minimize your background noise. Uh, if we do have to tell you twice that you have too much of it going on, we do have the uh, right, we may have to remove you from the conference to keep the quality as high as possible. So how to go about um, muting and unmuting. So uh, you can use in the Zoom app on an iPhone, it is the mute button toggle, which is at the bottom left corner of the screen. And that applies to uh, an Android device as well. On an iPad, the mute button is at the top uh, center roughly, a little right of center of the screen. On a Windows PC, you're going to use Alt-A, and on a Mac, you'll use Command-Shift-A to toggle the mute status, and on the Mac and the PC, you can use the space bar as well um, as a uh, push to talk. And on the phone, you're going to toggle with uh, star six. Uh, and to uh, reiterate, as I mentioned, this call is being recorded. You would, will be able to uh, find it as a podcast on um, our website at ibugtoday.org, where you can search by topic. Uh, where we also have uh, a YouTube channel, and this is also uh, edited into a half an hour segment that is broadcast on site into sound radio. So all kinds of places where you can uh, hear this call again, should you wish to. Uh, so with that, we're going to go around and uh, introduce ourselves and where we, our, we, where we are from. So I am Maria in Albany, New York. Um, and again, you have to unmute yourself uh, in order to introduce yourself. So do feel this free to do that. This is Herbie in Houston. Hi, welcome. Priscilla from Arlington, Texas. Hello. How are you? All right, anyone else? Sharon Dave from, you. from New York. All right, hi, Sharon and Dave. Susan from Houston. Hello. This is Dee. In the area known as the Heartland in Illinois. <laughs> this right. is Roy in Fort Worth. Hello. This is Brad. I'm in Dallas. Welcome. Mary in Hello. Tennessee. Welcome, Mary. And who was the other person I heard? Judy from Canada. Oh, Judy, welcome. This is Helene from Woodstock, New York. Hello, welcome. 
This is Ned from Texas. Hello. This Carol is Marvin. All right. I think I heard Carol and who is the other person? Marvin from Chicago. All right. Welcome. Marvin. All right. Anyone else want to say hi? Adam from Chicago. Welcome. This is Sonia from Houston. Hi. Dang on Cincinnati. Yay, well, I'm here this time. Oh, very good. Welcome back, Mr. Dana. All right. Anyone I'm else? Jim wanna... from BA. Hello. All right. So oh. welcome. Anyone else? Hey, it's Hershey from Florida. Hershey from New Hampshire. All right. Welcome, Hershey and Jody. Shree from Virginia. Hello. Anyone else? Freddie from Galveston County. Welcome. Oh, dear, I do hear an echo. Um, I think I'm going to do a mute all because I have no idea where that is coming from. So if we just hang tight. Okay, and if anyone else has not said hi and would like to, feel free to unmute yourself and say your name and where you're from. Michael in Houston. Michael in well, Houston. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. McCulloch. All right. Anyone else? All right. Very good. Well, welcome, everyone. Who would like to get us started tonight with our first question? Yes. Who is that? Okay. I thought I heard someone, so feel free. You might be muted. This Susan? is Adam. Susan. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll go with Adam first, I think I heard, and then Susan, I'll come back to you. Okay, okay, ladies first. That's uh, fine. <laughs> All right, then. Susan, you got the floor. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, I know this was brought up not so long ago, but I have gotten it, so um, this time I'll make a note of it. How do I, where do I go in settings to uh, delete uh, the history and cookies? I'm thinking it's in general, but I don't remember. And then like I said, I'm gonna make a note of it so I don't forget. This is Brad. Okay, very good. Go ahead, Brad. I assume we're talking Safari because that's where you, in a browser is where you would have cookies. Um, so you wanna go into your settings. And it's not I really do the same thing. Oh, I'm no, sorry. Hang on. It's not under general. So you go into your settings and you look down the list until you find Safari. Okay. And then you open Safari. So now you're looking at your settings for Safari. Okay. So you're going to want to go pretty much all the way to the bottom. And it may not be the very bottom, but it's down there. And you should mm -hmm. see history and cookies. And I think you open it up okay. and it's like a button. So it opens up another window. And there should be a button in there to clear. Um, I can't remember if history, cookies and history may be separate because it's been a while since I've been in there. But you want to oh. clear your clear mm -hmm. cookies, clear history. There may be one for both, but it's, that's where it is. Okay, so you want to go to sounds... settings, then Safari, then all, right. all the way to the bottom and you'll find it. All right, great. Uh, um, can you uh, set it to automatically do that at a time no. period like? No. It may be. I don't know. I have been a while since I've been in there. Okay. Thank you, Brad. Maybe. We appreciate it. All right. This Mary. is Marion. This. Okay. Uh, is this on the same question with yes. the cookies? Okay. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say that I have started using the search feature in settings lately, and it's good to be familiar with what settings exist, but when you want to find something uh, obscure or quickly. When you open up settings at the top, there's a search uh, bar. And so you can just type in cookies or history and it will uh, give you options. And usually, you know, it's the top one or something. And if you click on that, double tap on that, it will take you directly to the sub, sub, sub menu of where you want to go. 
All right. Thank you for that. And I know, um, I don't know if this is still the case, but I know there used to be some, uh, definitely a useful feature. I know there used to be some sort of limit on how far it would go. Like I remember I used to not be able to uh, get to the Braille settings under, so that was accessibility and voiceover in Braille, but it would get me to voiceover. So Oh, but now I see it is working. So that is very good. That improvement has been made. <laughs> All right. Um, I think, did I hear Shri? Were you wanting to yeah, say something? Yes, go ahead. Um, you can also um, do privacy browsing in Safari so that it doesn't keep track of your cookies and cache, but you'd have to kind of do that every time. So uh, if usually most browsers offer that, Google offers it. Safari offers it. So it's one of the options when you're browsing a web page. Would you like to um, expand on that and tell how you would uh, open a private tab? So when you go to the tab, new tabs, if you swipe to the left, one of the options you'll get is uh, open a privacy. Um, I don't know what the exact word it says, but it'll say something in the effect of privacy browser. If you double tap that, then you're opening a web page. It's in a privacy mode. So as soon as you get out of that web page, it basically clears everything out. All right. Yeah, and so and that's and that only applies to that tab to be that is clear. Correct. Yes. All right, but that is definitely a good option. So very good. All right. Anyone else on this question of your Safari data? All right, very good. Then we will go to Adam for the next question. Um, I have a SC2020 14.8 iOS. My question is about attaching and um, unattaching a file from a text message. Can someone walk me through the steps to attach a file to a text message? All right, who this would like to go ahead, Herbie? The easiest way is just to share it. Um, that is usually the most easiest way to share a um, file via text message. I can't remember if there's a way to actually attach it a different way, but if you go to the share sheet, you know, one of the options is messages. And what that does is that just shares a um, link to the file. Um, so Herbie, do you want to clarify? So when you're talking about sharing, are you, where are you um, starting from? I think I understand so what you're saying. But I from sure. the file itself, like, so like, mm -hmm. um, in the file, usually where the file is itself, like a lot of times, depending on where you're at, it's either an option within the file, um, there's a share option, or if you flick down, sometimes you'll get to share that way. Or um, that would, um, that's usually the typical ways. Mm -hmm. um, do you know exactly, like where exactly is the file on your phone from on? Okay, Adam, uh, Adam go ahead if you... Yes, um, um, I have a folder called files. Is this on your, uh, this is on your phone? Like you? Yes, it's on yeah. my home page. I'm sorry. This is Nancy. Okay. All right. Um, go ahead, Nancy. Um, Adam, are you, um, I'm just wondering if you are familiar with how to open the file from the attachment. So if you get, say, uh, an MP3 file, do you know how to open that file if someone sends it to you through messages? Back up, before I open the file, do, would I have to unattach it from the message? No. no, that's why I was asking. So when you go to, when you get the message, it will often say, um, this this message has a file attached and if you sometimes I, i'll swipe i'll try swiping left or swiping right and it'll say the name of the file let's just say um it's ice cream or something like that then you would double tap on it and the file will open up and you can swipe to the 
there's several options inside. It'll say done is your first option. And then if you keep swiping to the right, play will be an option just if it's a audio file and you can swipe to the right some more. And then there's a toolbar there. And one of the options there as Herbie was explaining is a share option. And so if you double tap on that share option, then go down to the bottom of your screen there's a lot of options. So if you want to send it to someone else as a message and they've just recently messaged you, you can share that file with them through the messages. And usually, are you familiar with that? There's usually, I don't know, five to 10 names in messages. You can also email it or there is an option where it says files. So if your folder is set up in the files menu on the phone, you can put it there. Um, so you, you've got all sorts of options if you go to that shared, shared sheet at the bottom. Does that all make sense? And then when you're done, you can swipe back to the done option and it'll take you back to the message that you were in. Or the same with the email, you can um, find the, or at, at, in an email, the um, attachment will be usually at the bottom of the email and you can open it up and you'll have that same shared option. I'm, that same, yeah, share, shared sheet, that's what I mean to say, not option. Thank you. So, so uh, Adam, just to the take the what Nancy was describing the you know root of it is that there are just there are these different places right from which you can begin the process from which you can get the file whether it's in the files app that is on your phone that sounds like the one that you were referring to but it could also be if someone sent you a file in a message or an email and so once you um opened them from wherever then you uh, would use that um share sheet this is and herbie. there's actually another go ahead herbie you know one uh, maybe you were about to mention this i'm not sure i was just thinking now one way you probably could directly s attach a file in messages, I think this would work is in the share sheet. If you go down to copy and then in the message edit field, go to your um, actions rotor to the edit rotor and um, go to paste that might directly attach the um, file in the message instead of sharing a link. And uh, oh. anyway. Oh. I did not know it. Thank you for that. I actually did not know that. Um, so we're all I learning. I've not completely, I've not tried it, so I'm not guaranteeing it'll work, but that's something that mm -hmm. just occurred to me because that's how you do it on the Mac kind of. So that just occurred to me, wait a minute, the phone might be the same way. So mm -hmm. I, yeah, go, go ahead, Adam. No, I was just going to say that it'd be handy if you wanted to uh, send the shared file to multiple people, but didn't want to put all those people into one message for whatever reason. Um, um, so you could copy it and then write a, a individual note, uh, attach the file, send it off, start the next one, write the individual note and continue this is nancy <laughs> all right go ahead nancy i just wanted to remind you adam if you're not familiar with this uh, you, maybe you are on the computer if you email it and i don't know if messages has a bcc field i don't i don't remember seeing that but in email if you didn't want to keep resending over and over again, you could have the BCC field in email and put all the people that you want to send the, the file to in the email so that they would, you're, you wouldn't be sharing their email addresses with everybody. So that's another option. If you don't want to, if you have say 10 people, you don't want to have to keep going back and reattaching it, and reattaching and sharing it. So this is Herbie. All right. Uh, go ahead, Herbie. No, there are no, there is not a BCC option in messages. You'd actually have to have a message distribution list that you just sent to singly if that was um, 
done through a third party, and that's a whole other subject, but there is no BCC in messages. Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay. And stay tuned to the iBug is- bite that I will uh, have at nine will show another way to attach uh, a file to an email, um, which is the way that I typically use when I need to do it. So stay tuned for that. Uh, go ahead, Susan. Comment. Uh, um, uh, well, kind of a question uh, on the same subject. Um, don't you have to put a comma in between each email, you know, like for each person's email, but uh, like hotmail.com, su- such and such hotmail.com, comma, and then type in another email address, then comma, and so on and so forth. This is Nancy. Okay, so this is an email now. All right, go ahead, Nancy. I think it puts it in as you're as you're adding to your list of people. I think it adds it in now. I think you used to have to put it in, but I've been able to um, add a number of people to a list and I haven't had to put that in. But are you pressing the are you pressing the enter or return once you finish typing in each address? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Susan? Um, yeah, go ahead, Susan. Yeah, um, I don't know if that answered it or not, but so you put in the first email address. If it does not put in the comma, because you don't want them all running together. Uh, so how would you space them out then? That's why I'm, I, uh, this they is put Marian. the comma in there. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Mary. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Um, But I I just was so excited that I learned this recently. Um, Just like Nancy said, you, the, the Apple does that for you now. So um, when I'm sending an email, for example, to several people in the two line, I'll start typing the letters of the name and it'll come up with suggestions, you know, after two or three letters, it'll have a list of suggestions for my contacts. And so I just tap on the right one and it puts that up in the the two line. And then I don't have to do anything. I just start typing the next two or three letters of the next person that I want to add to the list. And again, it'll come up with those suggestions and you double tap on the correct one and it pops Mm -hmm. it up there. And then you just start typing the next name. So um, yeah, for messages and emails, I I've always thought you had to do the add contact button and then go in and search for the contact and all that. <laughs> and I was thrilled when I found out I could just keep typing names and it automatically, you know, uh, keeps them separated once you've selected it. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, uh, Susan. Uh, uh, yeah, that's very good to know. And uh, uh, that was a great question you brought up. So, uh, so that's another thing learn tonight thank you all right uh, go ahead nancy yep. oh sorry i oh. just was going to say susan if you wanted to confirm that that was in sorry my dog's chewing on a bone <laughs> <laughs> i just realized how close that was to the mic i'm so sorry <laughs> i think all of us who have pups can relate myself included <laughs> <laughs> sorry um anyway um if susan if you wanted to confirm that that comma or semicolon was in there you could swipe to characters and then swipe down or swipe up to just read character by character at the like find the com and then just swipe down and see if that that um, punctuation mark is in there this is Shree. all right go ahead Shree. yeah so this only applies to if these individuals are already in your contact uh, but if they're not in your contact and it's a brand new email and there's two different people you want to add, you are going to have to put a comma and then a space and then type in the other email address. This is Maria. The other thing you can do is to just press the, um, what is it called on that screen? Is it at return? Return. Key? Return. Yeah. And that'll actually do it. That'll insert that comma and such for you as well. And then you can start typing. Lots of different ways. All right, very good. Anything else on this question? 
All right. Very good. Then good question, Susan. Who would like to ask the next one? This is Kathy. Go ahead, Kathy. I tuned in late and I can't believe you're talking about this subject because <laughs> not the same, but is there anything to be said on um, finding a file that you were trying to email? Um, <clears throat> I was My brother was trying to email me a file that he scanned, but he can't find the file. He said when he scanned it, which I don't know how he scanned it, neither does he, but there was a little save button and he hit the save. So I'm trying to tell him that if you go back to where you made the file and you could share it, but if you don't know where the file is, like we checked notes and we checked photos. And I thought there used to be a file thing, file manager on the iPhone, but it doesn't seem to be there anymore. Is that an app you're supposed to get or? All right. Who would like to talk about the file manager, where it is, or any uh, tips on locating a file? This is Nancy. All right. Go ahead, Nancy. Um, you could use the spotlight shirt search, which is three fingers swipe down from the top, not, not at the, um, right below the, um, status bar, the, 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 the thing that I sometimes get mixed up with, if you do it from the status bar, you're going to get your notifications. But if you go just below the status bar, then you can get the spotlight search. He's got to know the name of the file. And then that might show him where it is. And then you could do the share sheet to send it to you. I tried to do the, the, I tried to use the search in settings. I I think I was mixing up the, but, and I typed, um, uh, what's that kind of file that P PDF. I I typed PDF thinking maybe I'd get a list of all the PDF files, but I, I didn't, I got some other weird thing that had nothing to do with anything. I don't, I don't know, but but is there a difference between the spotlight search and that search that's in settings? This is D. Okay, go ahead, D. <clears throat> okay. I think the simplest way to find any file is to go to the files app. Apple provides a files app, and everything on your phone ends up in there. And you just, when Where you open that, Files, it's either called file or files. It's an application. Do you have and to you, you open that and it will start off. There will be, what's it, uh, in the cloud, in Apple Cloud, or on my iPhone. And then there may be other things, like if you save a file, if you got a file through, uh, oh gosh, I think you can't think of what I'm trying to say. One of these other share things what's that real popular one Dropbox. Oh, sorry i lost it yeah dropbox thank you i knew you would know <laughs> <laughs> no. in any of these files anything comes into your phone or anything you type into your phone any file at all is going to end up in that application called file Fine. So, Dee, can you tell kathy um where is that files app how have you been getting to it well, this is so on mine. It's on about page four of my uh, icons on my home pages. But if you go search, you you can just go through all your pages and see if you have files. If not, you need to download it from the App Store. It's a free right. file application. Or, huh. as Nancy was saying a while ago, you could go to Spotlight and type in files, and you should be able to find it that way. Okay. All right. Uh, go ahead first, uh, Suva, and then Brad. Yep. I was just going to re uh, reiterate, you already mentioned it. So Spotlight is the best option. Um, and then you just type in files. And the, yes, the difference between Spotlight search and the setting search is totally different. So you'll be able to search different applications through Spotlight, but not through settings. I've just typed in files under settings and Spotlight. Spotlight is able to pick it up quickly. And when you type it into settings search, it is uh, not able to, it actually takes you to privacy and file settings. It's a, it's totally different. That's not what we're looking for, but um, 
the other thing I was thinking about to finding that document was maybe it was a Adobe scan. Maybe if they that's the one I generally use uh, to scan in documents. Um, maybe that's what they had. Uh, maybe a, some type of different application that is able to scan in. Now, when you scan in a document, they usually saved under a weird like a string of uh, numbers like uh, PDF number one or something like that. Um, you us I usually name mine right away. As soon as I scan in, I, I rename mine. So that might give you a little bit of difficult time because it is it just auto generates a name. So it might be a little tricky to find it if you're not already renaming it to yours um, as soon okay. as you scan it in. So this is Nancy. All right. Uh, first, uh, we're going to have Brad and then Nancy. Uh, I was just going to say, uh, you're talking about ways to open the files app. First of all, the files app is a stock app. You shouldn't have to download it. It should just be there. And you can always just ask Siri to open it. That way, it's not going to help you find where mm -hmm. it is, but it'll sure open it. Just say, Siri, just ask Siri, open the files app, and it should do it. Okay. All right. And go ahead, Nancy. Ditto. That's exactly what I was going to say. Good job, Brad. <laughs> All right. Very good. All can right. I, this is Shree. Can I? Okay. Uh, first, uh, I think I heard Shree, and then I wasn't sure who that was who jumped in. So we'll hear from Shree, and then whoever that was who was second. Yeah, and, and if you're in the Files app, basically, you're going to have two tabs in the bottom. You're going to have a Recent tab and a Browse tab. So if that person did um, save it uh, a file into the files app. If you go to the recent, it should be the first file showing up uh, on the top left. Okay. This is Sonia. All right. Uh, go ahead. Who is the person? That, someone started to say like, can I, Kathy, I don't know. I think. Kathy, were you trying to ask like a yeah. follow up? Yeah, okay. go we'll ahead. See. Oh, just, just reminding everybody, please, please say your name and wait to be recognized. And that'll just help move everything quickly. And that will help Maria a whole lot. So thank, thank you so you much. Very much. Thank Sorry, you. Sorry, Miss yeah. Kathy. All right, go ahead, Kathy. You wouldn't. <laughs> um, can I just ask how my, um, do I sound okay? Because oh, yeah. I'm not using the usual headphone. I'm just talking, I'm just holding the phone as if it were a telephone. Oh yeah, you sound great. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for the answer. That's a lot of help. I can't believe the topic came up. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Very look at that. Well, good and good luck finding the file. As uh, as as Suva said, maybe it got into one of these apps where it has a a name that has no relation to its actual name. So he might have to right. end up like scanning it again. So okay. good luck with that. All right. Very good. Who would like to ask the next question? Jin. This is Shri. Go ahead, Shri. So go, got an email question. So I am using threading for my emails. Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm using threading, I don't have an option to print an email. I, I have a print option if it's not a single email without any thread, but any mm -hmm. thread emails that I open mm -hmm. under the more option, I don't have a print. So I was wondering mm -hmm. if anyone know how to print with thread enabled with mail. All right. Does anyone have any knowledge on this? Any advice for Shri? This is Brad. Go ahead, Brad. I don't use threading, but have you tried looking under share? Usually it shows up at the bottom of the share sheet. There is. No, oh, this is Shri. Go ahead, Shri. Yep. So I don't have any options of share. There's no share there. The only option that I have is the, the typical as well as more. But when I go to more, when I when it's threading, it's right after uh, it's the last option is when it's not threading. It's the last option is print. Uh, but when I do a thread, uh, all the options are there except print. Huh. This is Nancy. Go ahead, Nancy. Have you tried on threading? Uh, well, yeah, I know it'll work if I unthreaded, but I then you know these chains of emails. Then I got to go hunt for it. This is Marion. Go ahead, Marion. Well, I'm, I'm not sure if this is helpful, but I think when I've been desperate to print an email, uh, if I 
do reply, then it's almost like, okay, now I control the text and it will allow me to copy, at least copy the text and then could put it into a, a note document, if not print it. Um, that's how I was in, kind of interpreting that. All right. Um, this is Maria. I'm quickly looking, Shri. Um, I can confirm that I'm having that same behavior. And I wonder if the reason is, is because like I'm so if I look at the bottom, the more actions that I can understand because that one is referring to the entire thread. And maybe their thought is that you don't want to print like pages and pages and pages. Um, but yeah, I don't know what the, um, I don't see it either. Like when I, I'm just using, uh, I just, Oh wait, I'm sorry. I do act. Wait a minute. I do see a print option. Um, so this is, I'm running iOS 15.1 and like, say I went to this message, that's message like seven. So I go to message eight and then I flick to the left, right. And I get to, to the, uh, more actions of a, uh, more op actions, excuse me, associated, uh, with, the threading jumps around, as we know. <laughs> um, the more actions associated with this message. And yeah, I do see there's a print all the way down at the bottom. This is Sri. Go ahead, Sri. So Maria, is that printing the last email? or the, I guess that's the first email or whatever they I'm use not, it for threading. Yeah, then? I'm not actually sure. So if I press, if I select print, because I don't have a printer, um. I don't know if I can actually see because now I see like print options and how many copies and things. Um, I don't know if I can actually this is print free. it to some fake things. All right, go ahead. No, I could try it in my house. I'll try a thread that's got like two emails so it's not printing all of it. And I can see yeah. the print too. Okay, okay, that's good. So you found it in the last email. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it does actually seem to be actually, so now the... um. This might be a detected text thing. I'm seeing this page one of two, and it is showing me the email that I thought I had selected it on. So this was your last email? No, it was like email seven, seven. or something of this 10 message. Thread. Okay, so you went to the last email to find it. Uh, so no, what I did was, so I went through the thread and then, so like say to get to message seven, uh, the actions associated with message seven, I went yeah. to message eight and then I flicked to the left a few times because right, that took me to the bottom of message seven and way there at the bottom was the more actions that was associated with message seven, right? Like I went, um, so like when I got to message eight, I flicked left a few times uh, past the headers of message eight. And then I got to message eventually to more actions that said that, that it was associated with message seven, like voiceover will say message seven of 10 and the sender and more actions. So that's like way at the bottom of message seven, right? In this case, I mean, I just randomly picked seven. And then um, I uh, chose more actions and then it... And if, okay, now here we go. And it was literally here, right at the bottom, like right after the notify me. Great, thank you. Yeah, all right, good luck with that. And I'm running iOS 15.1, if that makes a difference. I'm running 15.1, thank you. Okay, cool. All right, very good. Who would, I learned something new. Who would like to ask the next question? It's Sharon. Go ahead, Sharon. Um, I you know, when you're filling out a form, like a Zoom link, like register for the webinar, for mm -hmm. the longest time, it was auto filling, like it would have my name, my first name, my last name, and my email. And then it suddenly stopped doing that. So I don't know if I updated to a new system or if I did something. Does anyone know what made it stop and how I can get it to go come back? All right. Who would like to talk about setting up auto uh, and and which um, I might I may have missed that because I had a little cut out. Um, which uh, program are you trying to do this in? Well, I guess it's basically for Zoom events, but it's on my it's on my phone, and I am mm -hmm. now on iOS fifteen. But I think it sort of stopped working a little earlier. But what are you trying? In which like what are you trying to do? No, somebody in which will link and they'll say. 
um, register, you know, it's, it's in an email and they'll say register for the zoom program. Oh, okay. So it's in but, Safari. It's, it's, yeah, you're trying yeah, to fill so, a form in Safari. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay. No worries. All right. Who would like to talk about where do you find the autofill settings? Brad. Safari. Go ahead, Brad. Well, it's that it, it, usually you do these things, you tap on the edit field. And if autofill is enabled for the, for the website or the form you're filling out, your name appears above the keyboard. So my question is, when you say it stopped, I'm thinking this is a, the ability to autofill is a function of the form you're filling out. If that form allows for autofill, so it's possible that the form you're filling out, the, the person that created the form or the creator of the form, I should say, has not enabled autofill. Yeah, but it's, it's happening with me with this is a sender who I like, you know, they kind of have like weekly different events. And so I've gone to their events and they used to, it used to automatically fill in my information. No, and it, now it just stops filling it. It doesn't, you know, no. it used to like be pre-filled in almost. Again, this is Brad. Yeah. Go ahead, Brad. Uh, again, it could be a function of whoever is creating that web form. Ah. is no longer enabling autofill because to my knowledge nothing has changed on ios it's okay. Kathy. i uh, i'm still using autofill on certain things but it's possible i don't know which website which meeting what you're trying to register for all i'm thinking is it's not on your the problem is not originating on your phone it's at a it's on the creator of the website all right go ahead kathy could it could it be on Zoom itself? Like, would would it help if you went back into Zoom when you're not in a meeting and just go into the settings and make sure your your name is in there? Because so this is yeah. So this is the Zoom registration. Um, this is actually not talking about when she joins the event. This is talking about um those Zoom events that are set up where you have to. Um, register on the Zoom uh, website with your name and email to receive the actual link to attend the event. Like, you know, a unique registration oh, okay. link. Yeah. Never this mind. Is free. Sure. Go ahead, Sri. No worries. Uh, one quick question. Have you found any places where you are able to submit your um, uh, the prefill parts in the form? Well well, once I, once now, once I do it is I go into the form and if it's blank, I'll click on it and then the autofill option will come up, but I don't have it set up so great. I have to, I don't know. I have it where I go and then I go into other contacts and I search under my name and I find my name. I mean, I'm, I've done it. It's clearly very clunky the way I've set it up, but then it will autofill, but it like, seems like it's so many steps. I liked it in previously. It used to kind of, it seemed to know me and it just, Auto, it just did it automatically. So, did this is Shree. Go ahead, Shree. Did you change anything with your contacts? Like, did you change anything in there? I don't think I'm. I'm looking. No, I mean, you mean like add or delete a contact? No, your contact information on your phone. No. Did you make any changes to that? No. Mm. No, I, frankly, no. All right, go ahead, uh, Brad. So, uh, are, are you? Are you saying that you 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 have to do each field in the form individually? Like you have to tap on first name, and then that will autofill because your name should then appear above the keyboard. Then you have to go to last name okay. and tap because that's how it does on mine in iOS. It's different on my desktop, but on iOS, I have to go through and let it do each field in the form individually. There isn't an option that I'm aware of that pops up that lets me just say, fill out the whole thing and it will autofill my name, my first name, my last name, my email, my phone number, whatever it's asking for. I've never been able to do that on iOS. I have to do each field in the form individually. This is Sharon. If I go right, into- Go, go ahead. I'm sorry, if I click on it, autofill contact will pop up. 
So then I go into contacts. I have under other contacts, I find my name and then I click autofill from there. And once I do that, then it'll fill it in. But like I said, it's like, I have to go do it. I, previously, like, you know, a month or two ago, it, in, in a lot of these, it would it would fill it in on its own without me even mm. having to go to that step. And I don't know if it's me, if it's the form. I just was wondering. This is Brad. Okay, go ahead, Brad. Are you using Safari as your browser or are you using a different browser? Safari. Okay. I don't know. All right, go ahead, Shri. I'm just thinking maybe this was one of the changes that with Safari with 15. Dot uh, when the 15 dots came out, because I know they did some changes to Safari and maybe just as a, um, you know, it's one of those things that did, they didn't probably, maybe probably implemented, maybe talk to Apple Accessibility, see if they have some suggestions for that. Oh, I'll do that. Okay, thanks. All right, very good. Good luck with that. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I know there's a Safari, uh, Safari settings, like when you go in, you know, settings and then Safari. And I don't know if there is anything there in terms of um, like in the privacy and security, or if there's like some kind of um, in your, maybe your iCloud keychain, if there's something about like saved form data, I'm kind of just thinking out loud. I, I don't know if this would uh, apply. So it sounds like um, there's some homework. <laughs> huh. That's um, interesting. Thank you. All right, good luck with that. All right, um, who would like to ask our next question? This is Marion. Oh. Okay, go ahead, Marion. Um, I I'm not even sure how to ask the question because I'm not sure of the term, but um. I upgraded from a, an eight to a 13 and a friend of mine who has a 2020 SE said that um, what she really liked about it was a, a screen recognition or something that could, uh, when voiceover wasn't able to recognize some text, uh, she could turn that on and it would, uh, anybody know what I'm talking about and how yeah. to use it? Yep. All right. Who would like to talk about where do you go to enable the screen recognition? Currently on. Hello, this is Kushal. Okay, go ahead, Kushal. Um, yeah, who is this, by the way? The, uh, this is Maria. I'm one of the facilitators this evening. Oh, hello. Hey. Uh, so <laughs> to enable screen recognition, you need to go to settings, accessibility, VoiceOver and in VoiceOver recognition, there is a screen, the screen recognition option. Uh, you need to download the package files. And um, after that, you will, it'll um, download and then you can also add it to your rotor as well. So I hope that helps. I can quickly show it if you like. Portrait, message, uh, setting. So um, oh, let's that's okay. Yeah, thank you, Kushal. Um, yeah, let's at this point um, just leave it Disagree. at that. I do think um, it could be a good feature for like an iBug bite at some point, perhaps. Um, but for now, I think does um, does that help, um, Marion, in terms of your? It does, except I also just want to might be about to say it is. Uh... This is Marion. Everybody's disappeared. Maria needs to unmute. Hey, Marion, it's Nancy. I don't hear anyone else either. <laughs> okay. No, we're here. Oh, well, Herbie. So, um, yeah, the other the other question besides how to enable it was, um, what is its function, basically? This is free. Oh, yeah. we're all back. Okay, sorry. So basically what it will do is uh, when an app is built, sometimes certain things in the screen is not uh, coded. Uh, for example, there could be an app that has a button on the top left. Typically that would be a back button. 
but voiceover might say if the code is built uh, the way they may have built it, might just say button. What screen recognition is going to try and make a logical guess to say, okay, this is in the top left. So most likely it's going to be a back button. That's what it tries to do. All right. Uh, Thank you. All right, awesome. And um, just a note, <laughs> I will just give a warning note uh, that just be careful if you do have it on the rotor. Um, if it's not required in an app, um, don't turn it on just to see what it does because it can sometimes make really a mess of things and it can sometimes actually really lock up an app. Yeah, it can make yeah. it mess. That's true, Kushal. Yeah. All right, yep, yeah, thank you, Kushal. And by the way, your demo was uh, fun. I just listened in the uh, in the workshop, so oh, a cool demo. <laughs> All right. All right, very good. Who would like to ask the next question? I've got a question, actually. This is All right, Kushal. go ahead, Kushal. Um, how do you, um, Axa, if the iPad or your iPhone is in landscape mode, how do you access the control center Notification center or even the status bar. All right. Go ahead, Shri. Uh, you just perform the same gesture as you would do in the portrait mode. Uh, basically, if you're in a landscape mode, you're going to be anywhere, anywhere from the bottom of the edge of your phone and you slide up uh, to get the first pop. And then you keep sliding up, get the second pop. That's your Home screen could even pop up will be your app switcher and vice versa if from the top down if you touch uh, from the top part of this between the screen and your um uh the trim of the phones here the first pop slide down yep. it's basically the same thing ah okay because i, I usually use in portrait like i think most of us use it in portrait mode so yeah it'll be a bit of a mm. this is true. yeah i'll be starting some uh, work experience with the kids at uh, one of the primary schools with at stuff so, um, yeah, so that's why I asked. This oh, is right. And uh, go ahead, Shri. Yeah, like you'll be noticing that, like if you're watching Netflix, that's one of the things where it is always displayed in uh, landscape mode. So, if you ever want to go back to the home screen, you're going to have to use those gestures. Okay. From, from the landscape mode. Mm, okay. So, all right, I'll have a play with that. All right. And uh, Kushal, I would just say, I don't know if you're, maybe I wonder if a difficulty you're having, if your phone is set to stay locked in the portrait mode and then you switch over to landscape, it's not going to, you know, switch no, over. Yeah. I, I understand that, but I'll just, yeah. um, because I'll thought, if I want to get back to the home screen at the moment, with Netflix, what I've set up a two finger gesture. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but I'll, I'll have a play around with that. I, um, yeah. Thanks for that. All right. Very good. Who would like to ask the next question? Hershey. Go ahead, Hershey. All right, so this is kind of out there, but for appliances, anybody have any suggestions of dryers or washers that they uh, like to use or that they find accessible with their devices? I devices. Uh -huh. All right, who has had experience with, my, my parents have gotten a Samsung, but I have not gotten a chance to play with it. So I have no idea about accessibility, unfortunately yet. Um, does this anyone actually have, go ahead, Sri. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear, I couldn't hear. Washer, washers and dryers with accessible apps. Smart, you know, smart washers and dryers. This is Sri. Go ahead, Sri. I haven't gotten one, but I talked to um, Samsung to see if they have a, for the dryer, they do have a sensor for the iOS app where you can turn it on and off. Just, but it, from what they told me, all it did was just turn the dryer on and off, but it doesn't, you know, I, obviously my, the dryer has all kinds of settings. So I didn't proceed getting it because I didn't see any benefit, but they did say mm -hmm. they did have a little mm -hmm. thing, a Wi-Fi uh, module for the dryer. Uh huh. Oh, I know this is Maria. I know, uh, and Hershey, I know zero details other than what I'm about to say. So, um, I know, uh, on the blind bargains podcast, and this was a while back, there's some kind of 
oh, is it called a short or a bite or a something? It was like, it was, it was meant to be a short little review thing. And uh, uh, the, the host, I believe got like a GE or something model of some sort. And I want to say there was some sort of, they used the A lady as well, but I feel like there was some interaction with an app. If I remember. Just Brad. All right, go ahead, Brad. Yeah. That was a while back. Joe Steinkamp and Ricky Enter did something. If you go search the, um, I don't know the history, the, what do you call the archives? Go back a few months. They've, they did something like that. I remember that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for that information. All right. And who would. Just want to comment on that. Yeah, go ahead, Kusha. This is not dryer or this related, but for air conditioning devices, like you can use this Sensivo device, if anyone's heard of that. What is it? The what device? Sensivo, I think you've got to set up the aircon remote and you can basically turn the aircon on and on. Uh, you have to use the Sensivo app or the website. Uh, I think the website's much more accessible, but you can adjust the temperature, turn on and off the aircon and all that. This is super. Okay, go ahead, Suva. Uh, for the air conditioning. Oh, okay. For the air conditioning, I use Nest thermostat second gen third gen doesn't really matter they're very accessible um, you can control your air conditioning through the app however i do not have a application that will do washing machine or dryer i usually use my braille dots uh, labeling and uh, uh ara <laughs> so those are those are the, I, don't, I don't have an accessible app I do have a samsung but i don't think they do that like manually you know go in there and adjust the i have to do a little bit more research on that to find those out but yeah, this air conditioning nest nest thermostat will do that. Yeah. All this right, is Marian. Go ahead, Marian. I have two smart apps for my washer and dryer, and their names are Peter and Max. <laughs> Just saying, <laughs> teach your kids how to do your laundry and <laughs> have your problem solved. <laughs> that is I the would other be one. Facetious, yes. <laughs> I use the braille dots too. Yeah. Yes. So do I. Well, I live in an apartment, so I can't just decide which, but thankfully I might, the appliances with the braille uh, labels are pretty accessible. So I have no experience either. So Hershey, if you get one of these, um, we've heard um, about a couple of the people have with the air conditioners, which is great. Right. Um, but yeah, if you get one of these, do let us know how it goes. We will report back because I got a bad oh. dryer and uh, look today. Oh dear. Samsung and LG are good. Just for the people out there, they're good brands. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but I would stick to Whirlpool or Maytag. Um, I find a lot of people in that that have had issues with with you know uh, appliances mm-hmm. and such. Um, there are apps, as I've heard. Um, I've heard there are sensors as well, like a, a for the dryer. There's like a little, looks like a circle magnet thing. You just stick it inside of the dryer, and then that acts like a, a sensor. Uh, I don't know if it's Apple Kit enabled. That was the other aspect of it. Um, I'm an Android guy, as everybody might know. I'm on Android Insight on iBug. So come join us, Kathy. I heard you. <laughs> anyway, but. Uh, or anyone else, you know. Or anyone else. I, I mean, I haven't heard Kathy's <laughs> voice in a long time. So. Ooh, but, this is uh, All right. Uh, one second. Go ahead, Hershey. Finish. Yeah. But, but, but with that said, uh, Maytag and Whirlpool do have capable mach- uh uh, smart capable machines and I have a friend that got one recently and has found uh, good usage out of it but yeah braille dots and bum dots are definitely the way to go but we got to figure out if it's a spinning knob thing or if it's simple yeah. you know like these there's just too many complications these days so well yeah and not to mention some machines have like actual you know menus and such with a touch screen so it doesn't oh, really right. matter if you know where the button is so <laughs> yeah um <laughs> all right uh go ahead Julie. So Hershey, I had a question. You said there's a sensor that you can put in the dryer. Do you know what that sensor does? I don't recall what it, I, I, I don't recall if it just tells you if your cycle's over, that type of thing, or if it gave you more details, like if your clothes are completely done as, as you know, if they're wet or dry inside. Um, I, I'm trying to recall, uh, there is a person called Stacy IO, IOT. Uh, she's, she's a blogger, writer. And I've heard other YouTubers that do nothing but IoT videos all day. So they spoke about these certain devices. But I think it's the, for, for our best interest for us, 
is testing some of these devices or knowing, okay, if I go to Samsung or LG, is this going to work for me? Because the the ones that I saw today, they say capable. That does not mean that they're smart app you know, enabled per se. And, you know, other appliances that are in the house, like the, uh, what's that cooker thing called? Uh, Instant, Instant, Instant pot. pot. Right. Like that's def. we actually, I have a friend of mine that actually had a conversation with that. So Android and iOS is fully accessible because they actually fixed that and they went back to the drawing board to redo the whole app uh, for accessibility reasons. But uh, Whirlpool, Maytag and them, not sure. Samsung would listen to you. LG, probably not so much. So This is Carol. I know. Uh, this is uh, yes, go ahead. Jonathan Monson recently, a few months ago, did an episode about accessible washers and dryers. I wasn't shopping for one, but you might want to look in his archives. Appreciate oh, that. We'll look under yeah. both of them. <laughs> All right. Yeah. This is Very Sandia. Good. All right. Yes, we have reached the halfway point. Go ahead, Sandia. All right. Thank you, uh, everybody. Thank you, Maria. Busy first half. And now we're getting ready for the second half. So we uh, would love for anybody who didn't get a chance to say hello and where you're from. This is your turn. Please do so. Hello, this is Jake from Michigan. Hi, Jake. Welcome. Thank you. Nikki from San Francisco. Welcome. Hi. Nancy from Stevens Calcer. from Bath. Nancy, Nancy from Bath. Welcome. Suva from Houston. Suva, welcome. Linda from Humble, Texas. Linda, welcome. Thank you. This is a Hershey again. I wanted to say hi, Cynthia. Hi, Hershey. Hi. Welcome. Glad <laughs> to have you. All right, anybody else want to say hi? Didn't get to the first time around. Oh. Terry from Arlington Heights. <laughs> Welcome, Terry Ann. Good to have you. All right, anybody else? It's Chanel. Hey, Chanel. Welcome. Hello. Hello, hello. Okay. All right, very good. Uh, so glad all of y'all are here. Just want to quickly go over some uh, quick announcements this week again, something for everyone every day of the week. So we're uh, except for Saturday, but okay, let's go. Let's start for our tomorrow. It's Clubhouse. Uh, I bug mini buzz from five to six. We do the same thing that we do here, but on a different platform. So join Clubhouse and get your questions answered. Wednesday is the Mac buzz. All right, so all things related to the Mac and that will be on Clubhouse and that will be from five to seven on Clubhouse. So there you go, another opportunity to ask all those Mac questions, very good. Uh, then Thursday, we have Trekkie Talk. We're starting, uh, well, we are have already started season three of Discovery and we're uh, I think we're up, I think we're real watching episodes three and four or five and six, but we'll find out. Anyway, so check it out for that. We have the audio described uh, programs for that. So if you want access to that, please let us know. Send an email. Uh, let's see what else. Friday, Friday, Friday is the iBug night at the virtual movies. And well, We'll come back to that in just a second. Let me just quickly tell you our social media. I know y'all probably already know all this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. The website is ibugtoday.org, I-B-U-G-T-O-D-A-Y.org. That's the best place to get information about everything that we're doing. There's an upcoming tab, and there is where you can see what is upcoming. You can also register. It's all free. Everything that we do is free of charge. So if you'd like to get your own email notifications of upcoming events, then do that. Register on our website. I uh, can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash group slash iBug. Today is a good place to post questions and get information there. We have a Twitter account is at iBug today. We have a YouTube channel is at, it's the YouTube, iBug today uh, is the channel and you'll get all of our podcasts that are uploaded to YouTube. So there you go. And of course, all of our podcasts are available on our website as well under the podcast tab. Okay, we have a mentoring program. If anybody needs help with their iPhone, please complete the application on the website and then we will match you up 
up with one of our amazing advanced users. If you are an advanced user and would like to share your talents with our group and help somebody new, we'd appreciate you too. There's an application for you as well. All right, with that, we are going to now, 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 we are going to go and find out well, let's see, where is that? Oh, uh, what is he? What is he? Maybe marvelous, marvelous iBug guy. Are you out there? Uh -huh. Hello? That's, that's Hello? Mr. McCulloch, are you mute? Everyone, there you everybody. Yes, yes, yes. I am here. And you I are watched here. episodes three and four. Oh, thank you. Good job. So what are we here for? I don't know. I thought you were going to tell us about, I don't know, the weather, the Astros, something. Did you, did you mention Friday night? Yes, Friday okay, night. Friday night. Friday night at the virtual movies. That's what we're here to talk about. Okay. What is our movie this week? But before I talk about the movies. Oh, dear. Do you, do you know about silent letter, letters in the English alphabet? Silent letters? No. They're silent. Are you being silent? Very good. Yes, you got it. Oh, my Correct goodness. Answer. What do we have for our winner tonight? We haven't done the movie yet. All right, let's get started. It is now okay. time for... Michael's movie magician. <laughs> Roaring applause. Do you uh, practice throughout the week to do that? Yes. I thought you did. Okay, Very go ahead. It's important to do it the right way every time. Mm. All right, so let's get into our clues. We have five fabulous cru clues or cruises for you this week. <laughs> So, clue number one. Oh, 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 would we like to tell them the rules? We have no rules for this part. You just yell out whatever you want. No, you got to say your name, wait to be recognized by me, and then you can guess the title of the movie. We're looking for titles of the movie. Clue number one. We meet. The main character who desperately wants to impress the girl he loves. Don't we all? Mm. Okay, any guesses? Is it Shree? Go ahead, Shree. Pretty woman. Pretty woman. <laughs> no, 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 no. That no, is incorrect. But that's a good movie and a good song. Not when you sing it, but okay, that's fine. No, I uh, will bring in Roy next week. I think Chris was. Is that Chris? Yes. Oh, Roy's dead. Oh, I thought I heard somebody. Okay. Oh, Brad. Okay, it's Brad. All right. Clue number two. He tells thoughtless little social lies. And then when he gets caught, improvises his way into even bigger outrageous lives. This is Maria. Go ahead, Maria. <laughs> is it liar, liar? Liar, liar, pants on fire. We had that guess last week. That's a good <laughs> guess, but that is not it either. Currently unmuted. This is a new window. Is it Kusho. Go ahead, Kusho. Is it catch me if you can? Catch me if you can. No, that, that, that's a good guess, though. This is Roy. For watching. All right, go ahead, Roy. How about pillow talk? Pillow talk. I love it. But that's not it either. Okay. Okay, okay. Time to go on. I want to hear a little pillow talk before you go on. Dream on. Keep going. All right. Clue number three. Another character is an ex-CIA man who doesn't trust the main character. 
This is Shree. Uh oh. Shree. Is it heat? Heat. No, it is not <laughs> heat. <laughs> okay. Next. Anybody else? Any other guesses? That would be a dog movie, but we're not showing any dog movies this year. How is that a dog movie? I don't want to know. Go on. Okay, who's next? Anybody else? No more guesses. All right, we're moving on to clue number four. He, that being the other character, keeps the ashes of his dead mother in an urn on the mantle. This is Maria. Maria. Is it maybe, is it meet the parents? It may be meet the parents. Yes, yes, yes. Ding, 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 ding. That <laughs> is what we are watching this week. Meet the parents. Starring Ben Stiller, Robert De Niro, and some other good people. That you don't know. <laughs> Okay. Those are the okay. only two that are. Those are the two main characters. Yeah. Okay. I'm just really Bl Blythe, yeah. Blythe Danner is the De Niro's wife. I don't know what the girlfriend's name is. She is a not very okay. well known okay. part. Okay. 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 All right. Very good, Shree. No, Maria. Shri no, I got it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Maria, all right, Johnny, what do we have for Maria tonight? All right, I think Maria might like this next gift, but I'm not. Wait, so wait, wait, before, before you go. Wow. You, you, can't not... say, you can't say that clue. You can't say that gift until I give the clue. Our last oh. clue was the main character is seen as a threat to his future in-laws, beloved cat. Now, go ahead, Johnny. What do we have for our winner tonight? You ruined my surprise. Okay, so Maria, you may like this clue, but I'm not so sure about Lacey because it's a Himalayan cat. All right, <laughs> a Himalayan cat, black and white, and we are not going to dye her red to match the eye book colors, but she will have a Paint red the color. color red. But cats, yeah, well, yeah, paint the tail red. All right, so there you go. Uh, we have never had a cat, so you have the first iBug cat. Okay. Wow. Indeed, oh. there will be lots of chasing between for those who don't know. Lacey's my dog, and she's my guide dog over here. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Very good, Maria. Good job, everybody. Okay. Well, so. at, le at least it will be trained to pee in the toilet standing up. Yes, that's true. Exactly. Okay, so we are quite. We uh, let's see, Maria, are you ready to do the eye bug bites? Or I mean, are ready? I, or yes, yeah, uh, yes. Okay, all right. So let's master mute. I'm having issues with master muting. So hold on. Let's see if it'll let me do that. Yeah, okay. And I can. Hold on. I can, can do that. Go ahead and do that. Yeah. All right. Those sure. Let me. Bye, Mr. Oh, Good Mr. night, Mr. Like McCulloch. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So as I mentioned, and I'm going to just make my speaking great. My phone is doing strange things. I sincerely hope I don't have to restart it. It was um not wanting to uh when I was trying to click on things, it wasn't actually clicking on things. So let's hope we don't have a repeat of this. So 52 mail. 10 unread emails. All right. I know you can hear that. So as I uh, mentioned, um, it's very interesting how the subject came up uh, earlier. I'm going to talk about one way to attach files to email messages. We definitely talked about other ways, those being going into the file from wherever it is and then uh, selecting share and emailing it. Um, for me, I tend to... Um, write what I want to say. I do this on the computer as well. So I guess I just carry over the tendency. I write what I want to say, and then I attach what I want to attach. And usually my attachment is uh, somewhere in uh, a cloud storage, like on my OneDrive or whatever, Dropbox or what have you. So this is the way that I usually um, send an attachment. Mail. So we're going to open, we're going to open mail here. Mail. 
We're going to stop that. Toolbar. All right. Compose button. We're going to compose a fake message. Two. Text two. Text feed. And we're going to compose it to myself. M so like we discussed a earlier, you see I'm typing. E I'm typing first few letters uh, of my name, and, and then I uh, uh, touch in the upper half of the screen Maria hands to suggestions. Maria and Chris ticket and, subject. Text all right, field. and now I double tapped and it selected me, and I'm gonna put a subject as Insertion just point cap R. I will put test E A S T. All right, Message now content. Message body regards test. And now I'm touched beneath the subject field to go to the body of the message. And I'm going to double tap to make that active. Testing. Oh, message content. Let's try that Insertion again. Insertion pointed start. Okay. Message body. Lovely. So I double tapped and now we're uh, editable. So now um, what we are looking for is a button to expand a toolbar that's going to um, appear above the keyboard. So if I touch in the keyboard, Happy, Happy, I'm this is the prediction bar and to the, expand toolbar and so to button. the to the right of that prediction bar is this expand the toolbar button we're going to double tap expand insert the drawing button and that's most definitely not the beginning of this toolbar uh but we were taken somewhere so i can just quickly show you the options in this insert toolbar button so i just touched again kind of above the keyboard above the prediction bar to the left to get to the beginning of this toolbar message insert photo Button. And we have insert photo. This is specifically for a photo, which is not what I'm aim aiming to show you, but just to give you a sense of these other options. Take photo or video button. Text format button. Insert attachment button. And this is what we're going to be doing. Scan document button. But you see here, you can scan a document right from there and insert it. Insert the drawing. And insert button. the drawing. So insert. Cap Q. Whoops, insert drawing. And so I actually got taken to the end of this toolbar when I expanded it. Um, so I'm going to flick to the left a few times. Insert scan dot insert attachment. To insert button. attachment. Double tap cellular. Three of search. And that, <laughs> it, it started reading my status bar, um, but I actually am now taken into a files uh, app window. So as um, I forget who may have mentioned it uh, earlier, there are two tabs tab here. Recent. Recent. Tab selected. Browse. And browse. Tab. And, two two. and so uh, this literally looks like your files uh, app would look. And so if I um, just browse for a specific file here, it's going to bring me. Um, I am. Cancel more. Button. I'm zero, just, zero, ah, I, I am actually taken literally to the last folder that I attached a file from. So while that works out, I can just attach something from here again. Um, but basically this works just like your regular files window. Um, there's a back button here and you can back out all the way to the root uh, where you have the various locations that you can pick on my iPhone, iCloud Drive, any cloud storage that you have set up. And then you can browse uh, the folders and um, go to your uh, files. So I do have a folder here open on my OneDrive, uh, a folder open on my one drive and i'm just gonna um so i'll i'll, um, I'll show you so pop -up this is the beginning button. of this window if i files. Back file. if i go back we're gonna double one drive one so see i'm moving back like i said this is in the browse tab one drive browse back button browse so literally double as i just said cancel browse heading more button search dictate Locations. Button. The locations. On my iPhone, iCloud Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, Google Drive, Shared. So like I said, just these various locations that I, uh, other than the two native ones, locations that I have set up. So I'm going to go back to where I was. So I'm going to go back to my OneDrive. Drop OneDrive. Files. And I'm going to select. Folder. Shared. Files. Folder. And I'm going to just go into this first folder. I set this up so that I didn't have to do scrolling and such. I have actually found when I've tried to do searches, um, even if I was selected in my OneDrive or in files or in recent, it's generally told me there were no search results when I know there should have been. So I'm not sure what 
goes on with that. But um, so I typically kind of scroll to what I'm looking for. So if I go here and we will just find Starbook. We're just gonna CDM COVID. Okay, CD. We're gonna in, uh, attach this one. This begins with CDM, and this is a PDF file. I just randomly picked it. Of course, I've you know attached you know Word files and, and PDFs and, and different types of files. But I'm just gonna uh, double tap here on this CD. And... Message body. All right. Text field is editing. Regards. And so voiceover doesn't actually seem to, you know, indicate that there's an attachment here when reading out this body. Um, and if I just flick to the right, I'm going to reach Cat the I keyboard and so on. Content. And if I go to the left, there's a subject. Um, so you kind of just have to try. I mean, the fact that it just went away um, does generally mean that the attachment is there. And um, I won't show this to you because I it's on my computer now and I, I don't want to do any like, you know, screen sharing to demo, but um, you'll have to take my word for it or try it out yourself that um, if I were to send this message to myself, uh, the message would come with an attachment. So not a link, it would come with an attachment in this case, and it would actually have this PDF um, file attachment on it. So that is just one other way to attach a file to an email message. So that is my iBug bite. All if right, Maria. Thank All right. you. Yeah, does anybody have any questions? And you will have to do the meeting, my dear. So, okay. Oh. All right. So, if uh, anybody has any questions, that's perfect uh, timing there on that issue we just yeah. talked about. So, good, good tree. there. Go ahead, Tree. So, Maria, um, when you go to the um, above the predictive words, mm -hmm. do you the first tool that you get, is it always the insert tool? Sometimes I don't, I get other tools, right? And so I, is, is yeah, so where I was, la when when I um, double tapped on that expand the toolbar, I got taken to the insert drawing, which is the last item on that toolbar. So no, I was not taken because the first item was that, uh, I wanna say it was the insert photo actually, is like the very first item from left to right. So you might have to do some flicking left or right, depending, you know, or, or exploring by touch, depending on where you land. This is free again. Yeah, uh, is there ahead. multiple tools in that uh, toolbar? Like, is there other tools that will come up also? If you mean like other actions that you can, t there's one toolbar, but it has various things you can do. Like you saw, we saw there the insert photo, take photo, the format of uh, format text um the uh, scan document uh and and so on so there were there was the one toolbar but it had multiple things you could do with it so, so you don't have to select um other things in the tool to get to secondary options they're, they're all list 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 list. um one second we're just going to do a mute oh, okay so um Shri, you can unmute to come back in. so uh, I, I guess I'm not quite following the question. Selecting secondary items. Um, can, can you can you kind of explain that again a bit? Yeah, the reason I'm asking is because sometimes I don't always find the insert uh, attachment as an option. I have to kind of like flick left or flick right, then it'll say more options, and that. Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh-huh. Um, uh, oh, I see. Okay, so that could actually be, um, it's possible. I wonder if you have certain um, pro certain apps that have maybe, I'm just kind of guessing um, if they've added support for some kind of thing on the, because I used to have to do that. I used to, um, I used to get the more, I, like you used to before you'd have to do a double tap and hold and it would bring up this menu and there would be like editing options would be in there and then you know like you said there would be a more items but i haven't interesting i i personally haven't seen that lately all of them seem to appear for me because i know what you're saying like a, a bunch of the editing options used to be in that top menu but now they all seem to have um not only are there more of them but like anything to do with text formatting now is in that format text item. So um, are you invoking it with the expand toolbar or are you doing a double tap and hold? I wonder if that's the difference. This is true. The, yeah, go ahead. The only reason I asked this question is that's one of the reasons why I left doing this technique because it was a little cumbersome. 
-hmm. but now it seems like they've made changes to make it much more simple maybe then i'll go back to using this yeah this yeah method. so this was yeah this was made this is actually kind of recent this was in like i don't know maybe the last like couple of years was maybe i was 14 i forget the ios version where the mail app got more of a redesign and this was part of that um so yeah it 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 did used to work differently i know what you're talking about so that's why i figured i would show it because it has changed um you know quote unquote recently no that's good thank you it's Kathy. Go ahead, um, Kathy. Um, I'm, so I'm still missing where I have the, um, I went in to email and I got the keyboard app. Mm -hmm. And how do I find the, 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 um, the expanded tool now? The expanded, yep, expanded toolbar. Tool yep. So, so if I above? go to Q or P and I try and go above them, I'm just getting, um, like it says sent by my iPhone. It's like, I'm back in the email. I, don't I get see. Uh-huh. And, and if you flick to the right from that body, um, are you just coming right to the queue or are you getting like a prediction bar? No, I think it was just getting a queue. Like, right. There wasn't anything between the queue and the sent from my iPhone and then subject. Interesting. Um, I wonder if the key, although I don't see what they would have to do with each other, but it makes me wonder if the keyboard, I'm going to have to try that. If I turn off keyboard predictions, is it still there? Oh. Um, I do wonder then if it's going to be in the bottom, um, if it might be like in a different place on the screen, I'm going to try and very quickly do it in real time. Otherwise I'll have to, um, let you know, but I do, it, it kind of makes me wonder, is it somewhere else? Than on the screen because I mean they shouldn't they technically like don't have anything to to do with each other I wouldn't think that they would be dependent but I'm about to find out <laughs> so interesting question oh. all right um any other I don't know if I can try and um let's see if I can try and turn that setting off and do this live but I will it will be homework if I'm not All able right. to do it. Homework. Bria's got homework or <laughs> I guess I guess so. Or oh. Kathy, if you're able to figure okay, here we go. Predictive on. All right. If I enable predictive, then let me just go back in and I for anyone who's wondering where my speech went, I muted it and I'm using my braille display so that we don't get a bunch of um distraction. All right. Um Let's see, let me, uh, let me, I'm just gonna collapse the toolbar here so I can start this from the beginning. And we're going to go into the body here. And, ah, so now, Kathy, when I, so when I just went into my body with the predictive text off, I actually don't even have to select the expand the toolbar. So right beneath, uh, if I flick to the right from the body field, I just get this whole row of insert photo, take photo or video, text format, insert attachment, scan document, and insert drawing. And then I get to the key, the keyboard. So that's what it's doing on true. my phone. All um, right. I think Sri had a. Oh, Sri, go ahead. So, um, Maria, so did you? So now you don't have those predictive words, right? Yeah, you just have correct. Basically, the keyboard and then the toolbar. Option. The toolbar, yeah. Okay. Okay. Very cool. It's a very powerful tool. There. Anybody else? Final question for Maria. Okay. Nice job, Maria. Thank you. All right. Who now just going back to our regular anybody who didn't get a turn first time around? This is right. Nancy. Go ahead, Marty. Um, I just wanted to know. Uh, I got the uh, Overcast app. Is there an advantage to setting up uh, uh, the email account, or is it better just to bypass that and just go ahead and, and you know do your thing with the app? This is Maria. Okay, go ahead, Maria. 
Um, so I, it's been a very long time since I've used Overcast, but if I remember correctly, I thought that the reason they made you set up an account was to synchronize your uh, podcast uh, feed information if you needed to, um, you know, get, if you were using like another device or if for some reason it got deleted from your phone and then you went to re-download the app and right, you're going to have like no data, right? Unless you've ex- done an export of an OPML file. Um, but you would then, you know, be able to log in and uh, have, uh, you know, all of your podcast info back. So I believe, because it works kind of similar with like caster. So I believe that that was the intent of that. So I would personally suggest doing it because if you have a lot of podcasts, it that did. can be I a lot of it. work. To okay. Uh, this is crucial. Hold, hold on. Okay. Is this an answer to this question or a new question? I've got a new question. Okay. Hold on. I think we had Nancy before you and then we'll come to you. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Nancy. Hold, hold Nancy. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> all right. I have one quick verbosity question and then I have a watch question can I ask them both or should I pick oh, let's one? do one first pick one first and then we'll come back okay that that's great all right I I got a new apple watch all right very cool okay so I am trying to use the haptic um, way to tell the time and I called apple support yesterday because I went in and I think I set it up correctly but when I touch when I touch the screen it doesn't um nothing happens I don't I don't get any tacked oh. up Brad Feedback. Brad I thought you might tell us go ahead Brad uh, I've used this before uh, I haven't used it in a while but I believe you've got it turned on you want to tap the screen twice and it should start um tapping out the time but you got to go into the uh God, where is it? In the, under voiceover, I think. I can't remember where it is. But you got to set it up. And there's three different ways you can get it to tell the time. Yeah, I got, I got, sorry, this is Nancy. I did go in there and I found the um, terse and the Morse code and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it, is it one, is it a one finger double tap to yes. um, get it? Okay. I believe so. I use the one where it taps out the, First, it taps out the hours, and it'll tap out, um, you know, single digits. First, it or, or if it's like ten, if it's like twelve, it'll do one one kind of tap. It's like a long one, then a pause, and then it'll do two short ones. So that'll tell you it's twelve. Um, of course, if it's you know between one and and nine, it's just gonna tap out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is lengthy. Then it will tap out minutes and it does the same thing. If it's, you know, if it's 12, it'll do a long one, a short one. If it's 20, 24, it'll do two long ones followed by four short ones. But yes, you do. I believe it's a one finger double tap or is it a two finger? I think it's a one finger double tap. Okay. It's two finger. I don't know. Good. Anyway, this is this is Marty. A, a, a double oh. tap does does the whole time. If you do three, it does just the minutes. All right. Okay. Marty wants to add something. Go ahead, Marty. Yeah, uh, Nancy. That's always been. Um, I have often done. You you leave. I just leave the settings the way they are. There are some settings about like silent mode. Um, that's a little different than what you're talking about. I leave it on the first option because the other, there's one like the other option, it would do like five times. And then you want to leave it on the one that Brad mentioned, the first one where it does 10, it does a long one for 10 minutes or 10 hours and then short ones. But I've always had a problem. And what I seem to do is double tap the watch with one finger and do like two hard double taps because it seems like if, if you do two, if you do a double tap with one finger, doesn't mean you're always on it going to get haptic. It, it's not, there's not a set way to do that. You just have to try different ways with the double tap. And I do two one finger double taps 
and you have to do it, um, I'd say a few minutes after you last check the time, because for some reason, if, if you do it shortly after, um, it will go to reading the time instead of haptic. Wow. Okay. Well, Nancy, I hope that helps you out. This is Brad. Okay, go ahead, Brad. I just wanted to alert Nancy, be careful with this thing. It will just have a mind of its own and it will just start tapping out the time just randomly. Oops. You won't have touched it or something goes off. That watch screen is very sensitive. And I think what Marty's talking about, sometimes I would do something to make sure the watch is awake and then do the double taps or a triple tap, whatever you want to do to tell the time. But uh, after a while, you'll find it just kind of has a mind of its own and um, it'll just start tapping out the time. And that's one of the reasons I stopped using it. It was driving me crazy. Okay. Yeah, this, this is this is Marty. Okay, Marty. What Brad's, ta what Brad's talking about is I've like leaned on my arm, you know, on the watch. And then all of a sudden I'll... I'll pick up my wrist and it will you know i'll feel all these uh, little vibrations okay. so i know i've enacted it yeah this all is right Shree. okay Shri, and then we're moving on okay go ahead Shri. yeah i think one thing that i'll say is um what i've noticed is when you're sleeping it it's telling you time all the time it's vibrating because you somehow the sensor got touched and it's just telling you time okay well at least you know what time it is when you're sleeping. Okay, Nancy, I hope that helps you out. It sounds pretty complicated, but fun. Okay, all right, Kushal. Kushal, you out there? Kushal, it is your turn. You do have to unmute. Ah, hello? There you are. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh -huh. Hi, brother. Um, so, a uh, question for Marie. So, can he only scan documents on the device with the mail app, or can he do? If, if, is there is there a way to scan documents uh, using the i using the built-in photos app on the iPhone? Um. So, oh, sorry. I just ahead, figured he, uh, since Kushil mentioned me. Um. I know there is in the Notes app. There is a scan document options there um i don't know what either of these because i haven't tried them from there um i don't know what they do in terms of um are they natively images only and then you'd have to use you know the detect text capability to get uh any kind of ocr from them or whether they are ocr as well i actually haven't tried um i mean the photos you could you know snap a pic and then you would have to you know, use uh, detect text should be able to tell you some things, but you're not going to get, uh, I'm not sure how much of guidance you would get in the text. Like I would say for me, I personally use something like, um, voice stream scanner to be able to scan because I find it has good OCR and I get good, uh, gu you know, guidance in terms of how loud the beep is, <laughs> is, uh, yeah. you want the beep to be as loud as possible before you snap the pick. And you're not going to get, I, I, it's not going to be something like, I don't know how detailed, because I know photos, you know, gives guidance like for faces and stuff, but I'm not actually sure. Um, yeah, I like much. that actually, because I use the photos, like if I'm, if I, if I'm doing a selfie video, like, um, yeah, I, I, I like that actually. Sure, sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I guess in like a text document, I'm saying I don't know how if it's going to give you guidance of like four edges are visible and tilt the, you know, your camera this way or whatever, you know, to get the full text in view. So I'm not because it's not, you know, it's it's going to be a, um, a specific app designed for text scanning, you know, especially like a blindness one, but others as well are going to give you more precise guidance for getting a good picture to OCR text. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah. Sure. Right. And I think I cut Thank Shri you. off. Okay. I, I think Shri was going to say something, but I cut Shri. him off. Shri, Shri, you out there? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, um, basically all the native apps, uh, pages, notes, uh, they all have the option for the scan. I was just going to go check to see if the files have under the more options in the files to see if it also has a scan option. But uh, I know Pages has one. Uh, I think Keynote has one on the phone. Most of these the uh, the main apps for the iPhone does have the scan option. Okay, thank you. Great question. Moving on, who's next? Somebody new that hasn't had a turn? 
We'd love for you to ask your question. Who would like to ask a question? This is Jody. Go ahead, Jody. Well, not, not necessarily a question, just a, just a heads up for everybody. Uh, on Saturday, I had a weird thing happen with my messages app where I would tap on the message box and it would not bring up the keyboard. And if I turned voiceover off and tapped in the area where the uh, message, uh, the uh, text message was, it would bring up the keyboard. And so it was, it was really a, a, a you know, I'd, I'd mark where the text message was with my thumb and then I'd, I'd know where it was when I turned voiceover off. So I, I, you know, went through all, I, you know, to make a long story short, I tried all the things you'd try to get it to work, taking it out of the app switcher, turning the phone on and off and all that. So I called Apple Accessibility and I was on the phone with them for an hour and a half. And after trying just about everything, we ended up having to resort to going into settings and resetting my settings. And so, you know, which, which brought my phone back to the default settings, didn't bring the whole phone back. You know, I said, Oh my gosh, I don't want to. And they, she said, no, we're not going to do that. So we did bring all the settings back to default and, um, and then it worked fine. So I just want to let everybody know if you have that problem, that that's the solution to it. I had, you know, I had to go back in and pick my ringtone and, and, oh, and it's painful. Set up Siri and oh. every little detail of you know the, the custom set. You know on all my all my ringtones and everything had to be oh. reset. So it was a real pain in the neck, but it did work. So if anybody ends up with that glitch, unfortunately, that's what you're going to have to do. Okay, thank you, Jody, for sharing. It's definitely worth letting everybody know about. Okay, all right. Who's next? Anybody else? Somebody has a question? Has it had a this turn? Is free. free. I just wanted to say, I did look into the Files app. If you do go to the Browser tab and then swipe right to More option, you do have a Scan option there. All right. Thank you for following up. OK, who's next? Somebody new? Hasn't had a turn? New question. This is Chanel. Go ahead. No. Yeah, has anybody else had trouble um, reorganizing the widgets in iOS 15? Um, like, I have a widget stack, and so I was trying to rearrange the order of my widgets, and it doesn't work, like, in iOS 14. And I don't remember what I did there, but it was accessible. So I just don't know if anybody else has had that problem. Or, I mean, I got it to work just by kind of deleting the widget stack and then putting them back in the order that I wanted. Uh, so that was kind of a solution, but not the one I wanted. <laughs> oh, okay. This widget is Terry. users. Go ahead, Terry. Ann. Um, I have not done that because I'm still in iOS 14, <clears throat> but. I do know that it's a bug. Um, I heard from several other people in uh, WhatsApp that they're having trouble. In fact, things just disappear and you have the only way to get things back where you want them is to, to start from scratch, but it's a oh. bug that, and Apple does know about it. I understand. All right, not what you want to hear, Chanel, but okay. No, Thanks. Sorry about that. <laughs> this is Chanel, and I yes. do know about things rearranging because I was trying to do something else, and I, oh my goodness, I somehow had some apps from page one on page three, and just totally just ran, felt so ran. It was, um, yeah, it was kind of weird, but thank you, Terry. All right, good question. Thank you, Chanel and Terry. Okay, who's next? Somebody knew the problem. There are lots of problems out there. Who has a question? This is Marty. Go ahead, sir. Are, are there apps um, or are there developers that have fixed their apps so that the uh, chime function works because the ones that i have um i don't think any of them have been updated like the chime app and a couple hourly chime apps so i'm still like clockless on, or <laughs> clockless. on my phone 
poor Marty is clockless. Oh no. Um, anybody know anything? I thought of you, Marty, because I have an old phone here and it wasn't updated. And guess what? It has chimes. <laughs> so oh. I thought about you. I've, but, I've had to uh, go back to my Nokia N86 phone from 11 uh, years ago. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. Well, anybody have any news on the chime front? I uh, guess not. Okay. This is Chanel. Well, yes, go ahead. I thought iOS 15.1 was supposed to have fixed that, but I can't attest to that personally. But I thought I'd heard that iOS 15.1 was supposed to have fixed some of those. This is this is Marty. Yes, sir. Um, I did load 15.1, but I don't know if if developers still have to update their apps because I have 15.1 and they're still not dinging still not dinging okay this is jody well go ahead jody i i also have updated to 15.1 i am also clockless oh gosh say it isn't so jody okay all right well we hope that things will get better soon all right and we will find out what time it is okay who's next Somebody with a new question. Linda, go ahead. I was wondering if someone can tell me how to unmute, I guess it's called a group in Telegram. Oh, okay. Any Telegram users out there? Anybody? You may. Hmm. Linda, you might have to. <laughs> Tell us this about Tell us I'm going to take a wild guess at this because I've never used it. But have you tried to flick up or down on the yes. particular telegram? Yes. Do you I have any options there? Um, well, there is a setting option. And you can go within the group and it says mute. But um, and I click on it and it doesn't unmute just stays muted so i can't hear uh videos in that particular group this is free so it does toggle to mute but you can't unmute it once you toggle it right that sounds like an you might want to reach out to the app developer okay thank you okay <clears throat> all right Good luck. Tell us more about that. All right. Who's next? Anybody? Uh, this is Shree. Yes. Can I go back to that telegram? Can, can she explain what that app actually does? Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. Go ahead, Linda. Would you like to tell us about telegram? Oh, this is Maria. Okay, go ahead, Maria. Um, I actually, yeah, I have it on my phone. I haven't um, played with it yet, but it's basically like a, it's similar to like WhatsApp and Signal and such. It's like a messaging, um, you know, app. And I, I don't remember what is it's like differentiator. Is it supposed to be like really secure or something? I forget what their differentiating factor is, but um, I forget there was like, oh, what happened with WhatsApp a lot? Was it like earlier this year, at some point last year, there was some sort of it, maybe it was like the Facebook thing that like they share it, it shared your data or something similar to because Facebook owns WhatsApp and I forget or now they're called Meta but um, I forget what ah, there was some sort of a thing with their data and so people weren't happy with that and so there were a lot of downloads of Signal and Telegram um, so it must be some differentiator and how they don't use your data or whatever I don't know um, this so. is Herbie okay uh, was that Herbie? yeah go ahead yeah I think the okay. number one selling point of Telegram is that it's not part of Facebook the way WhatsApp is. I will say, while Telegram does have better audio quality with their messages, I the thing I much prefer about WhatsApp is the user interface. I find that a lot more intuitive, and I've not dealt with attachments in Telegram, so I don't know the answer, but I'm not a big fan of the interface of that app. Okay, well, thank you. And well, Linda, good luck. Thank you. 
Okay, who's next? New issue, problem? Anybody out there? A question. Just trying to think. I know I had one. It always eludes me at this time of the day. This is Shree. <laughs> Go ahead, Shree. Um, I can bring up something that I noticed um, when I used um, dictation. And uh -huh. if the dictation has a person in my contacts and it sees it as a mention, if I go to make corrections using, you know, the rotor to go to word by word. And if I did put a comma after the mention, voiceover is saying comma, comma, even though there's only one comma. Okay. I hope it makes sense what I just said. <laughs> All this right. Is, this is Maria. Go ahead. I wonder if this is a similar, like, you know, when you're deleting stuff and it says like comma deleted, whatever. But there's or deleted. I forget now what it says because I uh deleted comma some. I forget, but it, it like basically acts like there's a comma where there isn't a comma. Like every time you hit delete, I wonder this if this is, is related. This is true. Uh -huh. So that one you can actually fix by going to the settings in the verbosity, and instead of <gasps> changing it, you can change it to pitch. And then it doesn't say the. Comma. Oh but yeah, I don't want to change it to pitch. Uh, I, I did but change thanks. that, so that's how I knew that one. But this one, yeah. uh, somehow, when when it has to mention, and the reason I found out is I was trying to send something to Michael and Sandia, and I was trying to correct it. Then it said after their name because they were in my contacts, and they saw it as a mention. It said comma comma because you know like when you say hello Michael and Sandia, it said uh, Michael and Sandia comma comma, which threw me off. Uh, so I had to have somebody visually look at it and say, hey, is there two commas in there? Or is there just one comma? And they told me there's only one comma. Huh. Well, either way, it's okay if there's one or two commas. But, but so the voiceover is telling you there are two commas, but there really were only one comma. Okay. There was only one comma. Okay. Okay. All right. Very interesting. All right. Who's next? Who's next? I have a question then. I was trying to, I'm, I'm, whenever I use uh, Safari and sometimes I, I, I never know what to do with those, uh, the tabs, you know, there's a thing that says tabs. Are those my places that I went before or what? I mean, it just who wants to help. Brad. Tabs are like pages. You got different pages open. Um, you know, like on a desktop, you might have more than one window and each window can have tabs, but on Safari, you kind of got just on a, on an iOS, you got like one window, but you got a bunch of tabs and when you, you have to close tabs manually, to, well, I think you can maybe have it set to close them after a certain period of time, but down in the lower right hand corner of the screen is a button that says tabs right if, mm -hmm. and if you double tap it you should see like all the tabs you have open that you haven't closed my dad oh. was notorious for this but you know <laughs> he, was, he was cognitively challenged you know you don't have that issue or maybe you do oh, but yeah, anyway he would have okay. like 50 tabs open and it definitely oh. will impact the performance of your iPhone. But uh, if if you if you if you've been browsing and and you uh, double tap on that tab button, you now get um, smaller little vignettes of the different tabs you've got open, and you can put your finger on one and swipe up, and you'll you'll hear it say close, and you can uh, close the tab. I have tab groups and it says private. Oh, uh, that's a new, this is Brad. That's a, that's, that's a new thing with the new. Yeah, I just never saw that before. Yeah, but, okay. it's new. I haven't started <clears throat> using it. I like just the old but, way. But. So is there a way to navigate between those? I can just touch any yes. of those and go into if them? You touch, if you tab, tap, go to that tab button, double tap it, 
Uh-huh. Put your finger on it. You got a bunch of tabs open. You should be able to flick left to right, okay. and it'll go between the different tabs that are open. All this right, Jim. Jim, go ahead. Yes, what I found, and and it happens to me because I get into doing stuff. And what I end up doing periodically is every other day, uh, going to tabs on the bottom right, do a double tap and hold, and then I get a, a dialogue that comes up in the top. And then part of that dialogue is close all, let's say, and I'm exaggerating, like 75 tabs and you tap that and then it'll come back and say, are you sure you want to close all those tabs? And, or it'll say close all tabs and you just tap on that and do a double tap on that and they're all, they're all gone. They're all closed. Okay. Thank you. Much appreciated. Yeah. I do have a question. This is Terry. Oh, wait. uh, You have a follow up on this one, Terry? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Um, There is, I think it's like second from the right on the bottom, there is a tab thing that says new tab. Mm -hmm. So if you want to open a new new page, you know, or a new, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? website you know, or something a yeah. new website yeah 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 thank you <laughs> um if you if you double tap on that new tab then what you have to do it'll give you it'll tell you that your controls are not open so then what you do is double tap again and then it'll ask you for the web page or the name of the website that you want to open okay okay all right, this thank you. Okay, yes. So you asked about, you know, you asked that private, um, the private tab. Right. That's what I was mentioning earlier about uh, going private to that browser. tab where it doesn't save your um, browser information. Okay. Uh, so okay. like I go there if I'm like doing like banking stuff or something that I don't want the web page to keep the information, then I'll open that page. Oh, know? okay. And so as soon as you close that out, if you go to that tab and you close it out, um, all that information that was on that page is not saved. It's gone. Uh, all right. Thank you very much, y'all. Okay, Mr. Jim, we're coming back to you. All righty. Um, this is regarding Dropbox. I get periodically, I get people send me mail attachments and I want to shoot them over to my Dropbox so I can put them onto my computer or take them from my computer and copy them onto my Braille display. How long does it usually take for that file to get over from the Dropbox on the phone to the uh, Dropbox on the computer? Shouldn't it be instantaneous? This is Herbie. Okay, Herbie. So there's a couple of variables that it's going to depend on. One is the file size and one is your internet connection. And so the larger the file, the longer it's going to take to sync. And keep in mind, you've got two things going on. It's got a, you know, you've, once you added the Dropbox, it's got to upload to the server. And then it can then download to your computer. And so this is where the your internet connection can also be a factor. So it can, if it's a like a Word file, then yeah, it should be like pretty instantaneous or like a text file. But let's say if it's an MP3 file, and um, then that's going to take a little bit longer because of the file size. And if it's, especially usually, if it's, like, usually it's a text file. Then yeah, that should be pretty, like I'd say within a minute. Is there something I need to look at in my Dropbox settings? or? Um, just make sure that, you know, everything is syncing automatically. Um but a text file should only take about a minute really to you know once it hits dropbox okay, okay. because I, I keep getting a message that this file is already in your dropbox and it's not showing up on my computer that's why i asked let's uh let's go back to brad you might have something to add go ahead brad well i was going to say what herbie said but since jim's added more to it i would go to your computer and yep. I would close the Dropbox app and reopen it. That will oh, okay. initiate a sync. Uh, okay. Yeah. I've also, done that a another thing, times sometimes I have found 
that if I, on my computer, disconnect from Wi-Fi and then reconnect, uh, that causes things to initiate syncs. Oh, okay. All right. Um, well, do that. Terry. Thank you. Thank you both. Very good. And we are near the this end of our call. Okay, go ahead, Dee. Okay, I have a question about my best friend, Siri. Okay, uh, got one minute. Okay. Go for it. One minute. Okay, on iOS 13, Oh, not iOS 13, excuse me, on my iPhone 13 with iOS 15.1. Uh, I know Siri is supposed to be so much more responsive. Sometimes I'll say, hey, Siri, and she just sits there and doesn't <laughs> respond to me. And the other thing is, uh, I thought Siri now, like, you can continue asking her questions. Say, like, mm -hmm. if I ask her, uh, how old is Neil Diamond? She would tell me his age. And then I could just say, when is his birthday? I don't have to mm. say, when is Neil Diamond's birthday? Uh -huh, okay, uh -huh. she doesn't seem to be doing that. I That's honestly true. haven't really gone into the settings to see, but is there something in settings? All right. Safari to get her to continue. This Let's see what Jim, Jim like has that. to say. Let's go for it, Jim. Okay, I'm going to be quick. Go into your go into your settings and look for Siri, mm -hmm. okay, and then maybe right. redo them, okay, uh, because sometimes when you get updates uh, like this, it, it affects some of your things. Like it switched my Braille settings out to uh, US instead of UEB last week, and that was got very interesting for me. So I would try that. I would look at that, and I'll shut up. I'm done. This is Brad. Okay, go ahead, Brad, quick. Last okay. word. I don't think there's a solution. It's just the difference between the way Siri works and the way the A-Lady device works. They don't do things the same way. Okay. All right. With that, we're going to have to say good night. Thank you so much, Maria, for your help and Thank all you. the wonderful questions and answers and everybody's participation. That's what makes this work. And we love that you call in and share what you know and share what you want to know. Okay. So please come back next week. And tomorrow's iBug Clubhouse mini buzz from five to six on Clubhouse. And then on Monday, uh, Wednesday, from five to seven, it's the Mac buzz, also on Clubhouse. Answer all questions related to your Mac. Then we have Trekkie Talk on Thursday from eight to 9.30. And then I've ignited at the virtual movies we're gonna be watching a really fun movie. We've had some serious ones recently. So this one's gonna be fun, meet the parents. All right, so come and join us for that, for any and all of those. And we will be back with you next Monday. All right, good night. Happy birthday. Thanks, Bye. have a good night, everyone. Bye.